Welcome to the next module in this series. In this module, we'll be moving into more of a clinical focus, and we'll be talking about best practices in caring for sex workers. And this will be focused for healthcare providers, and then we'll be talking about some of the ways that healthcare providers can best address some of the barriers we talked about in earlier modules, and also get into best practices day to day. So some of the goals for this training include determining the best practices within your profession that promote the health and well-being of sex workers, evaluate how to implement these best practices clinically, and understand where to learn more and where to refer patients if you feel that your current understanding and the current resources you have available are not sufficient for your patients who are sex workers. So before we get into too many details, I just want to talk about how healthcare can be such a huge site of support for patients that are struggling in other areas of their life and patients who are sex workers who are experiencing a lot of the isolation and stigma and criminalization that we talked about in earlier modules. In the survey of sex workers nationwide from 2017, one participant wrote, just being able to disclose that I was engaging in commercial sex could have been invaluable. I was completely isolated socially and didn't believe I could trust anyone with what I was living through. So this participant did not disclose to her healthcare providers that she was a sex worker, but like many other participants, this person felt that it would have been really helpful to be able to use healthcare as a site of support. And I think that as healthcare providers, we're in a very unique position to be able to provide support to someone, not only in their health care, but also in lessening their sense of isolation and helping them build a stronger foundation in other areas of their life as well. But before you're able to provide this kind of support, it's important to reflect on how your personal beliefs and values on sex work impact how you treat patients and doing this reflection before discussing sex work in clinical interactions. And part of this is reflecting on how your personal beliefs and values on sex work strongly impact how you treat patients. This reflection looks different for every person and involves just really sitting with your own thoughts about sex work and about your patients who are sex workers. And if after this reflection you find that you still have beliefs and values that may be implicit or explicit that may negatively impact service provisions, and there's still something you can do about that, which is being comfortable in the fact that you may not be the appropriate provider, that there may be another provider that could be better suited for this patient and be ready to refer them to another provider. It's all right to know what your limitations are, and if that is a limitation, the best thing for your patient is being able to refer them to someone else. And if after reflection you feel that you're ready to engage with patients that are sex workers in a non-judgmental way, in a way that can make healthcare into a site of support. Engaging with educational programs like this is a huge step, so thank you for coming and being a part of this training program. Because professionals working in healthcare settings are able to confront the possibility of judgment within their own profession. The discrimination against sex workers within healthcare does not have to exist, and it's through reflecting upon your own beliefs and speaking to your colleagues, being ready to, to take on some of these challenging situations that you're able to break down the judgment that may exist. And this allows for healthcare pr providers to move past this judgment and provide the most comprehensive, effective, and compassionate care possible. And again, before we get into more specifics, just a huge idea that is repeated again and again throughout this survey and also will come up with most any patient who's a sex worker that you ask um, is just to treat sex workers the way you treat other patients, to acknowledge their specific requests, their specific needs, but to treat them as you would treat any other patient with respect and listening to what they need. And so this was mentioned earlier in the module, but building trusting relationships with patients who work in the sex industry is huge because most sex workers will not be comfortable or have no desire to disclose that they do sex work if they don't trust their provider and if they don't feel that this information will be handled appropriately. And for this reason, discussions of sex work may not arise immediately. It shouldn't be expected that the first time you meet someone, they'll tell you that they do sex work because that trust doesn't exist. And so there should be a big focus on building trusting relationships with all patients and sex workers will only disclose if they know they'll be safe and receive health care even after they disclose. And ensure in order to build this trusting relationship 
to ensure patients know that they will not be reported or judged for their involvement in the sex industry. And this can take a lot of form forms. This can be verbally saying that in an interaction. It can also mean posting materials in your waiting room of the office that say exactly this, that patients that discuss sex work will not be judged or reported by putting up a poster of a sex workers' rights group that says that you stand with sex workers. There are a lot of ways to make it known that it is okay for patients to discuss sex work with you. And if you do bring up sex work during a medical interview, during taking a sexual history, you can use direct and clear language. You can ask during a social history when you're talking about occupations, when you're talking about income, or during a sexual history if you feel it's appropriate then. And direct language can look like asking the question, have you ever supported yourself or supplemented your income through sex work? Have you ever been involved in sex work? There are a lot of ways to ask this question, but I think the two I provided are, are clear and to the point and patients will understand what you're saying. And again, a quote on building trusting relationships. Another participant, age 34, says, be patient if a sex worker tries to tell you their story because it signals they're beginning to trust you. If you cut them off or act indifferent, you will crush that trust and you may not get another chance to regain it. Don't rush to conclusions. All important points. If someone is, is opening up, definitely give them the chance to discuss their work, discuss what they need to talk to you about, and know that if someone is disclosing to you, it means they, they already trust you, and that's a trust that should not be taken lightly. Another huge area to touch upon clinically is confidentiality. Confidentiality is taken very seriously in healthcare settings as it should be, and ensuring confidentiality with your patients that are sex workers is huge. Oftentimes in a social history or a sexual history, kind of in a short preamble, uh, something that I always recommend is mentioning that all information stays confidential and will only be shared with other members of a healthcare team if it's absolutely necessary. And I would say that most times discussions of sex work should not be shared with other members of a healthcare team unless you have explicit confirmation from a patient that that is okay. And also before taking any kind of notes or making any kind of record, I would recommend being transparent with the patient about what their options are as far as recording what they're talking about and then allow them to choose and follow through with that. Um, there are many providers that have an electronic health record and are also taking personal notes during, um, during a visit and personal notes may just look like handwritten um, handwritten notes for their next visit or for them to remember in the moment. And so giving the option of if someone mentions sex work, either not recording it at all, which is an option, writing it on a personal note versus an electronic record, because it is worth noting that if something goes on an electronic record, then it often is out of your hands, um, what happens to it next. And most sex workers would not want that information to be that widely accessible. So asking them how you want things recorded and saying that you don't, don't have to record their occupation on any kind of record if it's not what they want. And also something important is being transparent about mandated reporting because healthcare providers are mandated reporters and saying that if someone touches upon the subjects of child abuse or elder abuse that you will have to report that regardless of what a patient wants in that moment. Um, and an example of how to approach recording and confidentiality in terms of sex work is thinking about the domestic violence framework and that a lot of providers will not record domestic violence on electronic health records, but will keep separate handwritten records that are kept kind of even more confidential because they feel that this information is very important to someone's health and they as a provider want to be able to remember it and not have to have this conversation again and again with their patient once, again, once that trust is built, but they are not ready to put that on an electronic health record. And another huge thing that will come up again and again in regards to sex work is avoiding assumptions and addressing judgment. It's natural and it is easy to make assumptions in any area of life. It, it is something that we do naturally and kind of has to be actively interrupted, but not assuming someone's experiences in the sex trade is huge because as we mentioned, there are so many experiences that people have within the sex industry and it's easy to assume one experience or another and 
move someone all the way positive or all the way negative in their experiences when this is rarely the case and you can only truly come to understand someone's relationship to their work and their experiences through listening to them through building a trusting relationship and letting their specific opinions and feelings on their relationship to their work um, and so don't make assumptions of a person's risk factor in relation to their work either as we discussed there are occupational hazards that may come up but a lot of sex workers don't experience the kind of risk factors that people who are not sex workers may experience in their sexual lives. And again, discussing this with your patients is the only way to get a clear picture. And listen to sex workers to understand why are they why they're accessing your services. It may be completely unrelated to sex work and their work itself may not be important in their clinical presentation. It may be a job as any other job is. Um, and so avoiding assumptions and avoiding judgment about the nature of their work um, comes into play, not only in, in being non-judgmental generally, but in providing effective care and providing care that does not fill in a blank space with assumed information instead of factual information. And as another participant writes, just listen to what your patient has to say. Try to understand, figure out what your patient is saying they need rather than assigning what you think they need to them. Sex workers are the same as other people seeking help. They will have job-related specific issues as everyone does, but are individuals. And when it comes to providing care options, this again is not specific for sex workers, um, but being able to provide a patient with options for their care, discussing what all of their options are, and then walking through making a decision about what's best for them with the patient is huge. When someone comes in asking about STI testing, discuss all forms of STI testing with them, not just HIV, and discuss their options for testing for HIV, how results will be communicated, but also discussing full STI panel with them and what their options are. Discuss comprehensive health needs and not just STIs and sexual health. It's easy to hone in on sexual health when someone discusses being a sex worker, but that doesn't mean that should be the focus or the only part of their medical visits. Prioritize what the patient is most concerned about. For many sex workers, their sexual health, again, won't be the primary concern or reason for the visit. And it's also key to provide patient education throughout um, a medical interview. It doesn't have to be immense amounts of education. It doesn't have to be highly structured and accompanied by all kinds of handouts, but just discussing the knowledge that you have as providers with your patients as it's relevant. And so in terms of STI testing, STI treatment, letting patients know what their options are and how they should go about making the best decisions and, and choosing the right treatments, the right practices, um, and direct patients to appropriate resources to learn more if there's not sufficient time during an encounter. Make sure patients know where to learn more if you're not able to go as in-depth as you would like as far as patient education. And the subject of patient autonomy is also discussed in a lot of areas of health, but comes up again and again regarding patients who are sex workers, because providing sex workers with options about what kind of care they will receive allows patients to make informed decisions about their health, to have agency in taking care of themselves and defining what they need and how they're going to go about getting that. For many patients, sex work will continue to be the only or best option in terms of economic stability. And while that's difficult for people who don't do sex work, have never considered sex work, to understand, to force someone out of economic stability can be disastrous, not only for themselves, but for their families, for their health, and for their ability to care for themselves. And so it's a challenging position to be in if someone talks about wanting to exit, but forcing them out of stability in the moment is not necessarily what's going to allow them stability long term and the ability to exit long term. And so don't force patients to exit the sex trade in order to be able to receive health care. If it's made into an ultimatum, either health care or doing sex work, that's forcing a patient to, to choose to receive care or to not have any form of income, not have any form of supporting themselves. And if a patient does express wanting to exit, refer them to the support services that they'll need in order to be able to exit. Ex being able to exit the sex industry is impossible if they don't have 
another option for generating an income for supporting themselves and making sure that they stay stable and well, often well-intentioned actions such as involving the police, forcing someone to file a report, forcing someone to self-identify as a victim in order to exit um, may, may seem like the most straightforward options, but oftentimes are not giving someone the material resources that they need in order to have control over their lives and make decisions about their involvement in the sex industry moving forward. And as another participant says, just be nice to us and understand that we deal with an unbearable amount of judgment and stigma already and cannot handle any more side-eyeing or uncomfortable questions or unsolicited condescending advice. I don't want to lecture or your pity. I'm just here for medical care. Please don't make it any harder. Making the, the effort to be kind to patients and to address your own judgment before interacting with patients goes sounds so simple, but it goes such a long way in clinical interactions and will really set the foundations for having not only a good relationship, but being able to provide effective care. And additionally, um, when we talk about referring someone to other places for services, it's important to be aware of the specifics of where you're referring them, not only what that agency will be able to provide them or will not be able to provide them, but where they stand on sex work and whether or not they have any biases regarding sex work. And don't out a patient as a sex worker without their explicit permission when making a referral. And when referring to other agencies, try to select support services that are educated about sex work and will not turn patients away. And when a patient has experienced violence, understanding that police have been perpetrators of violence and it may not be safe for sex workers to file a police report is, is huge. And forcing a sex worker to encounter the police or to make a police report while in healthcare services can, is something that will very easily turn someone away at best and at worst can put them in more harm's way. And again, meeting patients where they're at is huge. Approaching clinical interactions from a harm reduction standpoint can make a huge difference in being able to provide care that is sustainable and is effective for a patient. And mentioned this earlier, but not turning patients away for continued involvement in the sex trade is huge. Rolling with resistance is also something that providers should be ready to do. Patients may not be able or ready to make dramatic changes surrounding their health immediately, but meeting someone where they're at starts this process, and it's got to start somewhere. And scheduling follow-up appointments and following through with promised services is huge. If you're not sure if you can provide a service, but really want to be able to provide a service for someone, just say that you're not sure is always better than promising it and not being able to follow through with that promise. Saying that you hope another agency will be able to follow through with something is better than guaranteeing that another agency will be able to because that being as honest with your patients as possible is often difficult because you know we want to be able to provide everything and the best care possible but as far as establishing a relationship being transparent about the fact that something may or may not happen goes a lot further and it's also possible to agency-wide create an environment that is stable and welcoming for sex workers as we've discussed through all these modules social isolation is really can be very dangerous for someone's health and put someone in a position where it's very difficult to care for their health. And creating agencies and institutions where sex workers are able to be sex workers and are still respected and still receive health care is a huge step, not only in terms of health, but in terms of social inclusion more broadly. And the fact that if you create um, a health care site that is welcoming of sex workers, it serves as a model for other sites to be more welcoming of people who are widely, widely excluded and often isolated. And so as we mentioned earlier, displaying a poster or pamphlets in support of sex workers in the waiting room can let people know where you stand even before they have an interaction with a provider. Engaging with local sex workers and local sex workers' rights groups is huge and discussing sex work and reading and listening to or watching materials made by sex workers to learn more about sex workers' need from their healthcare providers goes a long way. And some resources that you can look to for more information 
our St. James Infirmary, the Sex Workers Outreach Project, which has local chapters in many U.S. cities, and Swap Behind Bars is for currently or formerly incarcerated patients who are sex workers, Call Off Your Old Tired Ethics, Queens of the Underworld and Pineapple Support both provide mental health care support for people involved in the sex industry. And additional information, again, can be found at some of the other sites sites mentioned, uh, as well as the Global Network of Sex Workers Project and the Lancet Special Series on Sex Work has some, some great research that was put out recently and is an entire special series dedicated to studying sex work. So here are some of the sources. These will be posted alongside these videos if you want to look at some of the studies that were mentioned throughout this more in depth. This is the, the end of this module. Next we'll be going over some case studies. Thank you so much for taking the time to participate in this training.